Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I'm your host, Chris Brown, and I am pleased and honored to have our guest on the show today. He is currently the Alberta Liberal candidate for the riding of Sherwood Park in Alberta. He is going to be the candidate for the Alberta Liberals in the 2023 general election. Uh, Jacob Stacy is with us. Jacob, Mr. Stacy, welcome to the show. Hi, nice to meet you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So before we get into the nitty gritty, the policies, the what you're hearing on the ground, I ask the same question to all the candidates for political office, the same question to start off all my interviews, and you're no exception. Where'd your sense of duty to serve come from, Mr. Stacey? Uh, my sense of duty, it really kind of boiled down to breaking, uh, to coming from uh, my parents and my family. My parents have always been very uh, politically motivated and always been politically kind of uh active i wouldn't say actively within a party itself but they've always been interested in wanting to make sure and see what's going on and i kind of gained that knowledge and that uh fervor from them as well and i decided to make the decision to run as a candidate and uh seek the nomination from the alberta liberal party um uh, to see what i could do to better my community and help uh, the people there and see what the problems are and really try and make a difference in that uh in that area and in alberta as a whole before we talk about some of the issues that are affecting the people of Alberta and particularly Sherwood Park, I want to talk about the Alberta Liberal Party here for a second. And why them? Why did you choose at the end of the day, the Alberta Liberal Party? What was it about them that connected you to the party? Well, I chose the Alberta Liberal Party because I've always been a kind of a liberal at heart is uh, really the choice. So I've always found that the NDP are a little bit too left leaning, big government, those kind of things. So I kind of uh, steered away from them and then of course the conservatives uh i've never been i've never been conservative ever in my life my parents very non-conservative my dad is a union man uh, uh for most of his life and he never really saw what the conservatives were doing that were help that ever helped him in that aspect and uh so i i always lean towards the liberal party uh me personally my parents are actually a little more um the ndp leaning i guess uh, but for me, I was always an liberal, uh, a liberal at heart, and I felt that this was the right time to step in and try and see if I can help uh, a party that has been down on its luck and has some, has been having some uh, issues and stuff like that. So I felt that uh, this was the right time for me to step in and try and I'll bring back a party I believe is good for Albertans and good for Alberta and uh, can bring it, bring it back and bring it back to some prominence within the province itself to help the, to help the people of Alberta and help the people of Sherwood Park. Now, if I, if I talk to someone in Fort McMurray and I talk to someone in Grand Prairie or even Sherwood Park or even down here in Calgary where I am, and I ask them what a liberal is, it's going to be a different answer for each one of those people that I speak to. So for you, what does being a liberal mean in 2022 or in 2023 when you'd be running as the candidate for Jacob Stacy, what does it mean to be a liberal? What it means to be a liberal for me personally, because again, like you said, it's a different answer for everybody, right? And for me, it's it's the party that best represents the middle of the ground, right? And for me, like I said, the NDP a little bit too left, the conservatives are a little bit too right. So I always felt that the centrist ideals were what leaned towards me. And that's what I want to make sure the liberals and the Alberta level specifically like, can be going forward. I felt that some of their image has been affected uh, both from the federal side and uh, just from the provincial side. The party, like like I said, has been down on the sock and it's had some tough tough times. So I feel that we need to, that the, uh, the image of the Alberta Liberal Party definitely needs to be kind of brought back to what it should be and what it is. And that is a centrist party working for everyday hardworking Albertans, but, and also dealing with our social issues and everything else kind of connected, not falling into a block of political leanings, really falling into the middle and saying, Hey, we want to, we want to support small business. We want to be, be part of uh, bring uh, good, strong democracy in Alberta and everything like that. And marrying those two together so that we can help with the profit margins of small business while also helping our social issues. So that's what I really feel is a, uh, is a liberal and for me what a liberal is and can be. You've decided to put your name for for the riding or the constituency of Sherwood Park. Um, 
you have, I'm assuming you are talking to your neighbors, your fellow constituents and talking to them, asking them about what the issues that are affecting them. And I always find this question interesting because we always look at provincial elections as a large scale election. It's what's happening in Alberta. Well, what's happening in Alberta is going to be different in each constituents association. So what are you hearing from the people of Sherwood Park? And what are you surprised at about the issues that are coming forward to you? Uh, some uh, the main three, the main three big issues that I've really seen from uh, Sherwood Park and what I've gained from my constituency association as well. Uh, and my associates uh, working with that constituency. Uh, from the information that they've gathered and what we've uh, gathered and what we started building towards is really like the, the economy, of course, is a big one with, of course, uh, inflation and everything affecting that. But yeah, the economy as a whole, uh, public education has been a big question, especially uh, recently. And then, of course, with the uh, with healthcare, um, both for and one of the surprising things that I really noticed was the biggest thing is that healthcare is across the board. You really think of it as more of a, you know, young, young parents and families, stuff like that. And of course, uh, senior citizens, but it's actually everyone. Everyone is looking at the public health care system and what's happening to health care. And that's become a very big issue for a lot of people. So that's something that uh, we're focusing on as well, because it is it's important for everybody. And uh, we need to make sure that it's a good, solid system for everybody. But, yeah, those are the three key issues that we've really noticed in uh, the Sherwood Park area. Are you shocked at those three issues? Because those are issues that I think a lot of a lot of Albertans are facing right now. And when you when you mentioned that, I was like, wow, that seems uh, very indicative of what's going on in the province right now as well. Yeah, um, it, honestly, it, it didn't surprise me. As I said, the only thing that did surprise me is that healthcare was a broadband issue, but education obviously is a big issue for again young families, uh, senior citizens with grandkids and stuff like that. And uh, any sort of person that's related to the education system. And it's also for the, the health of Alberta, both um, uh, physically and uh, psychologically. And um, those are those are important issues. So that was that was only the one surprise. Oh, the other two, 100 percent. I agree. It is affecting Albertans across the board and it's definitely affecting people of Sherwood Park as well. So when you're out there talking about these three issues, I want to start with the economy first. Inflation is at an all-time high. Uh, we are seeing a lot of people go paycheck to paycheck right now. What are you saying to these people when they're bringing this issue up? Because right now you're in this weird position where the party doesn't have a policy book that's going to be run in the election, but you have on the ground experience, you know what's going on in Sherwood Park. So you have to be able to talk to them about what your vision is, how you're going to help them. So when people are talking to you about the economy and about how to how to help the average Albertan, I hate to say average Albertan, but Albertans from across the political spectrum, what are you telling them about how the Alberta Liberal Party can help them and help them not go paycheck to paycheck anymore? Uh, one, a couple of things that we're really looking at, and we're looking at some bold ideas. We really want to make sure that we're uh, we're the, we're the party of do you know what we're going to do something. We're going we're going to make sure that it's some big and good for the good for the people of Alberta. And uh, so we've been looking at that, but we've also been looking at our small businesses that are around the area as well and looking at their profit margins. They're just, they've been shrinking more and more every year and their cost, their costs have gone up. Their, their insurance costs have gone up. Uh, I, I work for a small business myself right now. Um, I'm a manager of a Jiffy Lube and the owner there, his insurance costs have skyrocketed over recent time. And I'm assuming that's affecting businesses across the board. So that's a big thing that uh, we've been looking at as well and trying to help uh, see, okay, how can we uh, stop those profit margins getting shrunk even more and more, right? So that's a, that's a big thing. We've been looking at that as a party as a whole. And then both myself and my constituency, constitu constituency, wow, uh, constituency associates uh, on how to um, best uh, look at that problem, tackle that problem and see how we can resolve it for um, our small businesses. And then some of our bigger ideas are uh, looking at big uh, economic future business uh, business ideas. So one is uh, looking at semiconductors. It's been a conversation that's been going on all over. Uh, I'm starting to hear about it more and more every single day. And so, and even the people of Short Park are starting to say, do you know what? This is a, this is a big thing, right? And semiconductors are in everything. Electronics across the board, your car, uh, from, from your fridge at your home, 
to the oil to, to the oil truck up north doing uh pulling the oil out of the ground right so that is something that i believe we need economic self-reliance and economic security and i believe semiconductors can be a huge part of that and it's a large investment but i believe the payoff is there to help everyone in alberta and create massive amounts of jobs and high paying jobs for people in and around the Sherpark park area and edmonton area and all alberta around we we talk about healthcare and uh, not healthcare, sorry, public education. I want to start that because I believe that the healthcare talk that we're going to have is going to be a lot larger than I probably <laughs> anticipate with everything that's gone on in the last few days in Alberta. But let's talk about public education. Public education has been through a weird transition in the last 12 to 18 months with the uh, proposal of the new curriculum that is now being rolled out. Some parts of it are being rolled out. What are the... What are the parents? And I, I say parents, I know Albertans all across the in Sherwood Park and uh, across Alberta all have some uh, uh, idea of how the curriculum should be stated. But parents are the ones that are really taking a hard look at this new curriculum that the UCP have put forward. First off, what's your opinion on the new curriculum that's being rolled out? And what are you hearing about public education from your constituents that you want to represent in 2023? Uh, well, what, I, what I've really heard is a, a significant concern and trepidation over this new curriculum that is coming out. A lot of people are like, okay, um, why is why is the government getting so involved in what my child is learning? And from my perspective, I always thought that was a bit odd to myself, and I feel that it should be more of an all-around stakeholders uh, perspective. So what I, re- what I really believe, and I believe the Liberal Party is on the same page as myself on this one, is that we need to, we need to take in all stakeholders into account. So we need, to, we need parents, we need teachers, we need administrative, administration, we need uh, the, the students themselves. Um, to have some point of input, however much between all of those stakeholders, we can determine at some point. But uh, all of those stakeholders have a stake in this in this situation and need to be, I believe, more consulted than what has happened in the past and with this current curriculum. So I believe we need to really start looking at at uh, that curriculum as a whole and see, okay, what are some things we really want to uh, focus on and that parents and teachers can really believe in for the, the the children of the future of Alberta. Um, I, w- I want to jump in here for a second, oh, Jacob, and I apologize sure. for interrupting here, but I want to put this, uh, uh, I want to ask this question to you because I always find that, that what you just said interesting when it comes from politicians and candidates. How do you decide who what stakeholders you choose? Because the UCP will say, well, we we went to stakeholders. We we talked to people. And you're saying, well, we want all stakeholders. So do you listen to everyone? Do you listen to all voices? Or do you just listen to the echo chamber that will support the Alberta Liberal Party or only support your views? How do you decide what stakeholders you would like to see in that uh, room to talk about what a new curriculum should look like? That's that. That's that's a really good point, and it, it, it sometimes it can be hard to determine which stakeholders do we want to put more weight on and more less weight. But I believe all stakeholders have a, have a say in this situation, and in this uh, for this uh, uh, policy going forward. And I believe that it's um it's kind of a delicate situation. You need to take a a healthy reasoning between all the stakeholders, but I believe they all need to be listened. It's, it's hard to gauge how long, how, or how much a specific uh, uh, one stakeholder or another, but I believe they all need to be consulted. And I feel that this, this previous, this curriculum that was uh, put in did uh, weigh in on their echo chambers a little bit more. And I feel that's something that's very important that we need to try to avoid. And it's, it's, it can be difficult because, um with the world that we live in of interconnectivity and you know you're speaking your own echo chambers and stuff like that it's hard to get those outside opinions so much especially with all the divisiveness that exists so um i believe it is a tough road and something that but at the same time something that definitely needs to be done to make sure that everyone can be more satisfied with the curriculum rather than what we've currently got where there's a lot of dissatisfaction from parents teachers and uh uh, uh everyone around so would you case. would you want to see it go back to square one? Would you like to see like the current curriculum in its current status 
as implemented going forward through what uh, Daniel Smith wants and uh, Minister uh, Lagrange wants and go back to the beginning and say, okay, we got it wrong. We got it wrong. We have to try and figure this out and we have to do it correctly this time. Would you want to see that type of scenario or are there parts of the current curriculum that you're like, okay, I can see where they're going with this. I'd like it, but let's try and fix these. Like social studies has been one of the big areas that a lot of people are concerned with. Writing is another area. Math, they seemed like, okay, let's move forward with the math part. Would you like to see a complete overhaul or just some changes? See, uh, for myself, uh, in this case, uh, I know that a lot of people want to go back to the drawing board. I feel that's actually a little bit too aggressive. I believe that in this curriculum, there are some good things. And I believe as an Alberta liberal, I'm not going to, you know, I, I'm not going to be completely ostracized by even saying that I somewhat agree with some of the perspectives of another party. You just but how do no, I was just I was mouthing like, oh, how dare you oh. say you're not gonna just attack another party verbatim yeah. just for something that they said or did. What? Come on, Jordan. <laughs> Jacob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I, I believe as an Alberta level, I can agree with some things that another party has done, or that the another party has said, hey, we're in opposition to this, and this is something that we're uh, against, and we we say that this is something that needs to be changed. I say, do you know what? we can look at both sides and find the middle ground and hopefully build something better going forward. So I believe there are some pieces. I believe that uh, the uh, financial literacy, uh, understanding taxes, building budgets, uh, and having those things in the education system is important. And that is something that has been presented. And I believe that's something that we can uh, build even more into because I, I believe that a lot of people, uh, you know, if they don't go to the college route, they get kind of left to the wolves in this situ in those situations, right? And I believe that those are uh, educations that need to happen. So there are portions that I like, but again, with the social studies uh, aspect, I 100% agree. That is something that definitely needs to be looked at and almost be brought back to the drawing board because I feel that they have a very biased opinion uh, building towards a certain direction. So I believe that we need to uh, we need to build towards a uh, a more um, fa I don't like to use the words fact based because people go in kind of a huff when you come when you start saying fact based. So I, I believe again a more all around picture, an all around look at the uh, the system and what we're what our students are learning uh, in terms of social studies and everything like that because it's 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 not just one story; it's multiple stories. Right? There's so many stories being told. And we need to look at everyone's perspectives. So I, I want to turn to public education because I am cautious of time here. And public education is a pu not public education, pri uh, public health care. Wow. I'm not having a good day with my topics today, but here we are. It is, it is a Tuesday morning, but it's airing on a Monday. So I'm going to just chalk it up to being it's a Monday issue. Um, health care is one of these things that we we talk about all the time about how Canada is so proud of its healthcare system, but our healthcare system is overwhelmed right now. We have people who are waiting for cancer treatments. We are we have people waiting for this, a lot of uh, surgeries. We have people waiting to see their family doctor, for God's sakes. Um, what What's your view on the current state of our public healthcare system in Alberta? Our public healthcare system has been to say it frankly, it's been through the ringer, right? It has been uh, stretched, strained, pulled, uh, and uh, completely uh, exhausted of both the individuals and the system itself. And I, I really, really believe that we need to take a look at this system and see what we can do to fix it rather than taking almost an aggressive approach that seems to be happening right now um towards our the alberta health services and the the system as a whole and i believe we need a more healing uh proactive uh system you know working with smaller communities and working with uh um the the, the education system so university of alberta or university of calgary state nate all of that and working with them to try and uh home develop uh, nurse more nurse pr practitioners within Alberta and creating satellite systems uh, or in, in satellite cities, working with that, that to develop more localized uh, healthcare professionals in uh, smaller communities. So Red Deer, Grand Prairie, Fort Mac, 
uh, Medicine Hat, uh, all of those areas uh, and more to have our healthcare pro professionals uh, learn, grow, and educated in those areas. Because uh, a recent uh, thing that we've uh, seen is that the kind of the 70 70 rule, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but the 70 70 rule, 70% uh, of uh, uh, people who are educated in an area, 70% uh, of them stay in the area within where they're educated. And we're not only looking that from just healthcare, but we're looking that from uh, educated, like teachers. Uh, we're looking at that from trades. We're looking at that from everybody. And we're thinking, we're trying to take that approach to saying, okay, this is how we get people in our rural communities. And I believe that will lower wait times, that will lower um, uh, people having to go to the hospital and being able to work with nurse practitioners more directly and uh, helping with our senior citizens with at-home care and uh, those um, uh, senior facilities and, and uh, all of that. And I believe that's an overall healing system to help with our healthcare problems uh, rather than what's currently happening with the uh, current government. What's the state of healthcare in Sherwood Park right now? In the constituents of Sherwood Park is because we, we are hearing stories about smaller communities. And I, and I say Sherwood Park is a smaller community be compared to Edmonton, compared to yeah. Grand Prairie, to Red Deer, to Calgary. So it is a small community while it is still a large uh, center for the, uh, the constituency. How is the state of healthcare in Sherwood Park? And is because you talked at the beginning of the interview about how you were surprised that it's not just coming from one section of the po population of Sherwood Park, but it's coming from everyone, from our seniors to young families to single people. They're all talking about the state of our health care. So in your views, and you, you probably have seen it up close, what's the state of health care in Sherwood Park right now? I believe that uh, for, for the health care in Sherwood Park, I think, I think it's affecting everybody because there's so many people who have uh, grandparents, uh, uncles, aunts, uh, any sort of uh, grouping of that. Uh, they have so many people it, living in Shore Park who uh, they are concerned about their health care. They want to make sure that they're taking care of those. Their, their uh, elders and their families are going to have that care going forward. And um, that, may, that even people with lower income that live in Shore Park uh, can have that care as well and not be almost kind of left behind because of their pocketbook in that case. So we want to make sure we, because you're in favor, you're, I'm assuming as a liberal, because liberals brought in public health care across Canada, you're in favor of keeping the uh, public health care system as is and not moving towards a privatized privatization of health care, right? hundred percent. I believe that public health care is the way to go and that it can help everyone in the system rather than, like I said, the people with the biggest pocketbooks. I want to make sure that everyone can be taken care of. And I also want to make sure that those those people with the bigger pocketbooks or the uh, the the smaller amount of uh, money in the, in the in the wallet that everyone can be taken care of and can be taken care of effectively and efficiently. And that is something that uh, I think we need to make sure that everyone can be uh, respected in that way. And uh, like I said, uh, and from the senior citizens aspect, they want to make sure that their grandkids are taken care of. They want to make sure that their kids are taken care of, even though they're in their 40s and 50s and everything like that. They want to make sure that everyone, everyone's looking at everybody and want to make sure that they're taken care of and their families. So that is where we've really seen that kind of healthcare, uh, kind of broadband concern is that everyone's looking at everyone within their family and want to make sure that they're taken care of. And they are concerned about some of the things that are happening right now and that maybe they won't be taken care of. And they're starting to think, okay, what, you know, what am I going to do? I got to make sure that my family's taken care of. And, uh, you know, as a senior citizen you know, on a retirement, sometimes they don't have the financial wherewithal to make those decisions and help with those decisions. And we want to make sure that we're able to step in and help with those situations and make sure that our uh, seniors from to, from our grandparents to our grandchildren all across the board can be taken care of. Now, I, I want to turn to my last uh, topic here, and that is representation. Representation, representation, representation. Uh, in May, if the election is called in May, which all speculation it's going to be, but who knows what's going to happen in 2023? I've heard weirder, weirder things. Um, if you were elected, and I'm not going to burst your bubble here, but you are not going to be elected with over with 100% of the vote. Not going to happen because you have other people and other people, at least the candidates will go vote for themselves. So you will have to represent everyone. 
And you will have to represent people from the UCP to the NDP to the Liberals to the Greens to the Alberta Party. How do you see yourself representing everyone and not just the people who voted for you? Interesting question. Um, I really, uh, I really believe that it is your job as the public servant to almost kind of like put a, put a little bit of a blinder on your party lines at that point. You want to make sure that you're looking after everyone, everyone in Short Park, everyone in Alberta, making sure that you're representing them the best you can. And for that, that's uh, as, a, as, a, as an Alberta liberal, I believe that actually puts me in a great position to do that as effectively as possible, because as a centrist, as someone in as middle as possible, who can agree with both sides of the discussion and say, this is a good point and this is a good point. Let's see if we can find a happy middle. I believe I, I'm in a great position to be able to do that for all of the people of Short Park. So being able to have that centrist mentality can really give me that advantage that I believe some of the other parties won't have. And uh, I believe that gives me the ability to represent people who are hardcore conservatives and people who are hardcore NDP and hardcore Greens and so on and so forth so that um, I can represent everyone in, a, in Sherwood Park as effectively as possible being that centrist. Are people open to change in Sherwood Park? Uh, you are currently represented by, uh, I just want to make sure, Jordan Walker. He is the MLA for Sherwood Park right now. Are people open to that change? Are people willing to say, okay, what do you have to give me? What are you, what are you offering us? Because I, I want someone, I want something new, or I want to hear from people. Are people open? I, I really believe they are. I really believe they are. Uh, because uh, from the from the conversations and the, and the rumblings and the rumors and everything that we've heard, people are willing to are, are willing to make that change because they are a bit frustrated with some of the current situations that are happening. And they don't feel that either party is representing them more in that middle ground. They're representing them on only silo issues and silo uh, kind of ideas. So they really are willing, okay, you know, someone's got some, we've got some bold ideas. We've got some uh, things we want to do and we're, we're, we're willing to look at it and maybe see if these are the, the option, an option for us, because we feel that the other parties are not willing to make those steps and make those uh, decisions and go and go for it really. So I really feel that there is that, that it, there is that willingness for some change and some uh, new, some newness, some generational change in uh, Sherwood Park, uh, in the Sherwood Park area, both from youth and some of the uh, the uh, elder citi uh, citizens in uh, Sherwood Park are looking at what uh, you know what's going to be done about my my children and my grandchildren uh, going forward. And I believe that with our bold ideas and some of the things that we think we can do uh, for Alberta, I think there is some uh, some opportunity for people to make that change. Now, we've spent the last half hour talking about issues that you've heard at the door, and I guarantee you there's someone yelling at their computer screen or yelling at uh, their, their radio while listening to this saying, why did you ask this question? I want to contact uh, him to ask a question. So how can people reach out? How can people ask you a question who live in Sherwood Park and say, hey, Mr. Stacy, I would love to know your opinion on this issue that's in front of the legislature right now or this issue or what can you help me try to find a solution for this? issue so how can people reach out uh well i have multiple avenues to reach out to myself um i have my own website that you that anyone can visit and leave um there's a comment section at the bottom that they can contact me i have um uh, my own email as well that they can reach out as well um excuse me and uh i also have all the social media aspects as well i've got the uh, facebook page uh, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok as well. If someone wants to contact me through those uh, options as well, but, I will. Uh, I will link all but TikTok. I do not like TikTok. This TikTok is not coming on my show, so I will. 100%. All the other links will be in the show notes. TikTok, go find them yourself, guys. Hundred <laughs> percent, I understand. So um, I want to. Oh. I want to end on this question. Because I want to be instead of just rambling off the like how to spell the names, the links will be in the show notes. So website, email address, all that will be in the show notes. So um, 
I, I'm going to ask this this one question and take your time if you want to answer it. You have as much time as you want to answer it. Why should you be the next MLA for the constituents of Sherwood Park? I think that I should be the next uh, MLA for Sherwood Park because I have bold ideas and I'm looking at the entire uh, picture of everyone in Sherwood Park and trying to reach out to everyone and see, okay, what are the main issues that everyone wants to look at, right? I believe that uh, the marrying between democracy and profit margins is important, making sure that uh, small businesses are taken care of while also making sure that our democracy is solidified as best it can be. And I believe that can, those profit margins and working with that can help with our social issues and social services, such as good public education and, and good healthcare going forward. And I believe that um, we need to have bold ideas as well to make sure that uh, we have a future economic security and self-reliance for Alberta so that everyone, uh, that Alberta can be a place that everyone wants to be in and wants to have a future in and raise a family and have a, have a life uh, in. And I believe having those bold ideas with uh, a high technology sector being developed and uh, working on developing our uh, trade uh, all around uh, an economic opportunity for everyone, I, I believe that that's what we're working towards and that's what we're trying to express the most we can. And that's why I believe I should be the MLA uh, going forward with those bold ideas. Well, Jacob, I want to thank you so much for doing this, for sitting down. I said a half hour. I want to make sure that I adhere to that because I want to make sure you get off to your next event or go uh, do what you need to do. But thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about yourself, the Alberta Liberal Party, and also the issues that are affecting the people of Sherwood Park. It was an honor and a pleasure. All right. I certainly appreciate it, Chris, and I hope to talk to you again soon. We certainly will. So with that, I want to remind everyone, uh, as much as I said, go check out Jacob's information, put down social media for at least five minutes a day and go have a conversation with somebody. It helps our society, it helps our democracy and helps us be a better people at the end of the day. So with that, this being the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, just keep talking. 